Talk by Father Jeremy Haberimina. Jesus Christ is the truth. For Saturday of Lent. Readings. First reading. I, as a meek lamb, take into the slaughterhouse. Reading the book of Jeremiah 11, 18 to 20. I knew their plot because the Lord informed me, at that time you, O Lord, showed me their doings. Yet I, like a trusting lamb led to slaughter, had not realized that they were hatching plots against me. Let us destroy the tree in its vigor, let us cut him off from the land of the living, so that his name will be spoken no more. But you, O Lord of hosts, O just judge, searcher of mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Responsorial Psalm Psalm 7 Response, O Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. O Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. Save me from all my pursuers and rescue me, lest I become like the lion's prey, to be torn to pieces, with no one to rescue me. O Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. Do me justice, O Lord, because I am just, and because of the innocence that is mine. Let the malice of the wicked come to an end, but sustain the just, O searcher of heart and soul, O just God. O Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. A shield before me is God, who saves the upright of heart. A just judge is God, a God who punishes day by day. O Lord, my God, in you I take refuge. Acclamation before the Gospel Blessed are they who have kept the word with a generous heart, and yield a harvest through perseverance. Gospel Is the Messiah coming from Galilee? A reading of the Holy Gospel according to John 7, 40-53 some in the crowd who heard these words of Jesus said, This is truly the prophet. Others said, This is the Christ. But others said, The Christ will not come from Galilee, will he? Does not Scripture say that the Christ will be of David's family and come from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So a division occurred in the crowd because of him. Some of them even wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. So the guards went to the chief priests and Pharisees, who asked them, Why did you not bring him? The guards answered, Never before has anyone spoken like this man. So the Pharisees answered them, Have you also been deceived? Have any of the authorities or the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd, which does not know the law, is accursed. Nicodemus, one of their members who had come to him earlier, said to them, Does our law condemn a man before it first hears him and finds out what he is doing? They answered and said to him, You are not from Galilee also, are you? Look and see that no prophet arises from Galilee. Then each went to his own house. Talk Dear brethren, today Jesus Christ presents himself to us as the truth. A truth believed by few and rejected by many, all for the great, for the mighty of this world. Jesus Christ presents himself in this gospel as the living truth persecuted. And who are the persecutors of truth who is Jesus Christ? First of all, the greats of this world. What happened when Jesus Christ was in the world, it happens equally today. So we can repeat the same words of the Pharisees, the mighty of that time, saying, Is there any chief or Pharisee who has believed in him? That it does not change the truth at all. It is Jesus Christ, 
the Lord, who overcame death. You don't need to be believed by the president or by kings to be what he is. He is who he is. You don't need your signature to exist to convince those who want to believe in him. You don't need your signature to sanctify, it's Jesus Christ. However, today's powerful act just as they have in all past times. They keep thinking, is there a boss who has believed in him? In this world, if not I am wrong, there is no impediment to making a prayer. However, from the United States to all countries including Spain, there is no country where they meet before a summit or a meeting of heads of state to make a prayer. Or before, not after. That, exactly, is what confirms this gospel. Is there any chief who has believed in him? Yes, it's true that in history some tried, but they're isolated cases. It seems that Jesus Christ convinces the little ones more than the great. It's as if the gospel is for the poor. Is it true that it is fulfilled what Jesus Christ said in the parable of the rich and Lazarus? In the world thou hast had comfort, and now is the time of Lazarus? Luke 16 verses 19 to 31 does that mean Jesus Christ died only for the poor? No, it's not like that. Jesus Christ died for all men, but the powerful, the great, in general, reject the gospel more than the poor. The great, the powerful, are more tempted. And that temptation is called power and money. When the pride we all carry in us, selfishness is engendered indifference to eternal life. And if you don't believe in eternal life, it's like saying that Jesus Christ is homeless, and that's precisely what Jesus Christ gives us away, and where it awaits us. Earthly life we already have. If anyone has the comforts of this world, such as power or wealth, he has in this life all assured. However, he forgets to ensure the most important to man, eternal life. For this reason, Jesus told us how difficult it is for the rich to enter the kingdom of heaven with the camel comparison. It would be easier for a camel to enter through the eye of a needle than a rich man in the kingdom of heaven, Mark 10 verse 25. Therefore, this time of Lent would have to help us think more about eternal life than earthly life. In this life we can have many securities, but in the other, what do we have insured? And after we leave this world, what's going to happen? This Lent, Jesus Christ reminds us to seek the other life. And his death and resurrection can reach us, everything is already given. We are ourselves who don't want to receive him. Those who follow Jesus Christ are always persecuted, and the first persecutors are the powerful, the rich. A person who doesn't have power, no wealth, can't persecute anyone. Only someone who has power can persecute the church, his own children, Christians, parishioners, the doctrine of the church, who finds it uncomfortable in short. The greats chase, harass, they want to start all the real and good things in the world. The word of Jesus Christ is the one that is power, makes you tremble, but as opposed to the powerful, your powerful word converts, sanctifies when we hear it. It's about Christ. Some say, it is the Messiah, others, he is a prophet of Galilee. What is that, if not proud? The Messiah had to leave Bethlehem. The scripture says so, which will come from the lineage of David and Bethlehem. No, it is from anywhere, but from the lineage of David and Bethlehem. It's the same thing that happens to us, it's very important from which family we come from.
That's how we achieve prestige, power, in some way. We're just wrong about places. One example is to believe that some specific sites have more power than others. If I put my feet in such a place I become converted. There's nowhere to convert you. Jesus Christ, who is the living gospel, is everywhere. What it converts is not to visit a place, however sacred, but to receive Jesus Christ. And the same thing we can say with the lineage. It doesn't matter from whom we descend to have salvation assured. Jesus himself answered a woman who had said of her own mother, Blessed are the breasts that breasted you, Jesus replied. Blessed is he who hears the word of God and keep her. Luke 11 verse 27. The Virgin Mary listened, kept the word, and became incarnated in her. It's not just the fact that I fathered to Jesus Christ what makes her powerful, but to have received, accepted, that word of life. Jesus Christ can use anyone in this to confuse people about places or lineages. And the Virgin Mary has shown it, appearing in places so far away that people couldn't even imagine. The reason is to teach us that all places, all men, are equal to Jesus Christ. What matters is the heart that contemplates Jesus Christ. That's what really matters. Without faith in Jesus Christ, the rest is useless. The person who hears and lives the word of Jesus Christ is persecuted as he himself happened. Fortunately, his word has more power than all the persecutors, the powerful together, because it's a word full of love, while their word is full of wickedness, hate, anger, the opposite of love. Jesus Christ is living love. His face, before his executioners, shone as if heaven had come down to him. Thus live those who are of Jesus Christ in the face of the wickedness of the world. They are the victors of evil in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, who speaks better than anyone, because his word has true power, the one that gives us eternal life and transforms us into his image. Blessed are those who hear the word of Jesus Christ and live it. Happy people who want to hear you talk. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ, the Lord of life and death. Jesus Christ. Glory to you, Lord Jesus. Come, Holy Spirit. Immaculate Heart of Mary, protect us.